Hey, how's everybody doing out there? Uh, I thought I'd do a, a video. Uh, I've got some different things down here that I'm using for Skywarn. Um, some different software. So I'd like to go over that real quick. Uh, you've seen my other videos. Uh, also, uh, have added another monitor down here. So, uh, that one there. Um, it's good for text. It's not the it's not the you know real top quality monitor, but it uh, it does uh, what I need it to do. That's for sure. Um, I did have to upgrade my video card, um, and uh, it wasn't a big deal. I just wanted the three outputs on it. So it's got the DVI, the HDMI, um, and the uh, regular monitor output on the video card. Uh, I did upgrade the power supply also. Uh, I think it would have been okay. I had a 320 watt, uh, I'm sorry, 320 watt um, power supply. I went up to a 550. Uh, and I got plenty of room to grow with that. So uh, if I want to add anything at any different time, I can do that. So, And I'm sure it'll run cooler too. I run this computer 24-7 uh, with the monitors off for the most part, but I've got weather software that updates every minute will send me text messages on any watches or warnings or mesoscale discussions and things like that. So, um, a lot of people may say, oh, three monitors is overkill, and maybe it is, but I tell you what, when you got a lot of things going on like this, or may, let's say you like to edit video or edit pictures or you work on a web page, having three monitors to shuffle things around with is uh, quite useful by all means and uh, you know I think once you even go to two monitors it's hard to uh, try to function with the only one monitor so I guess what I'll do is I'll go through here and see what I have and this is kind of what I have open when we have any severe weather coming into the area um, and doing that control I have a lot of information a lot of things going on at one time so if I have everything in front of me and I don't have to flip back and forth to web pages or you know this and that and the other thing just makes things quite a bit more simple or simplified for me uh, especially for the fact if we're really busy and we've got a lot of calls coming in or on the radio and stuff it uh, just makes it a little bit more easy so I guess what I started with over here and uh, this information right here um, this box right here is the National Weather Service web chat and what that is is it is um, kind of a, a chat room where all the meteorologists on duty meteorologists for the National Weather Service are and some of the TV meteorologists are in there also and uh, it's just a good form of uh, communication um, sometimes they'll let us know when they're thinking about maybe issuing a warning for our county they might give us a couple minutes notice before they actually uh, issue the warning um, they may uh, they communicate with us the Skywarn members in each county. They can kind of ask what's going on, or maybe if there's an area of interest, they're wondering if we have somebody in. Um, so it's a good form of information and a good form of communication too. Um, sometimes the when we have any real severe weather coming in, and they have somewhat of a notice, um, they'll have an actual um, amateur radio operator at the National Weather Service there. And uh, their amateur radio is set up right next to the warning um, coordinator's um, radar. So anything that's coming in, the guys issuing the warnings um, can hear the traffic that's going on to the repeaters um, right away. So, it, uh, But a lot of times if things happen here real quick, uh, they don't have time to get one of the guys or amateur radio guys. So this certainly is the best form of communications. Uh, we still run our amateur radio net here. Um, when the Skywarn, when we activate Skywarn, because as far as having 10 or 15 spotters out in the field, it's still the most efficient form of communication there is. So we still use that. Uh, this right here, people may recognize as a Google document, and uh, we use this um, kind of to bridge the gap, really, between the non-amateur radio spotters and the amateur radio spotters. Uh, this is a Google document. It's live. So anybody that has the link to it here um, can click on that link and go to this uh, this uh, document and they can see what's going on. Um, the nice thing about this is uh, I think we've got five or six people that have the actual link, a, a different link to this web page, and they can actually edit uh, the document, which is nice because if I'm busy and uh, I've got a lot of people checking into the net or there's a lot of reports coming in, 
I can have somebody in a remote location at their home uh, listening to the traffic and entering everything in on this document. So uh, as I'm watching this, we'll have things that will actually uh, pop up and um, fill in for me. So that keeps me kind of uh, in tune with who's checked in, who's not checked in, where their location is, and so on and so forth. And there's two pages to this. This is kind of where you check in your call sign location, availability to go mobile, uh, time on the net, time off the net. And also if you click down here, there's also um, the time, call sign, location, and any reports that an individual station has given. So that kind of is nice to, uh, I can see the time that the event came in and the, what the uh, actual reported weather criteria is. Another good thing about this is uh, when there's more than two people in this uh, this document or on the site, um, a chat room will pop up. And this is a good way for non-amateur radio operators to get in and report anything they see also. So they may uh, they can get in a chat room and tell me their location and uh, what they're experiencing. We've only given this uh, um, uh, web address out to uh, known spotters and they have their spotter numbers so I can verify that they are spotters that have been trained and they're not just uh, um, some person on there you know making false reports or anything so it kind of uh, cuts down on any uh, erroneous um, you know information that might be coming in so again there's the web chat and there's the uh, Google document that we do for logging also the nice thing is when I used to do paper logs um, I used to have to write them out and tell I'm telling you what when you're in the heat of uh, any severe weather um, my handwriting is awful and <laughs> I'd have to go through and try to go through my chicken scratches and then document it right and and then scan it onto the computer and put it in a file all you have to do here is um, click on the save button up here and um, you can actually save the document and uh, it makes it kind of easy so uh, you can print it or you can save it into a file so everything's kept on record and everything is uh, you know taken care of just fine on there so makes uh, keeping the documents organized much easier than trying to scan them and put them into a different area um, I'm going to skip past the screen here real quick this um, software right here is called Storm Lab. Um, I use this pretty much as all around radar software. Uh, the nice thing that is um, the biggest benefit to this software is there's so much information that's on this one screen. Uh, you can pretty much do anything you need to do from this one area here. And I'll give you an example. Um, up in my area in Michigan nothing's going on right now but you can see down here if we were to click on this is a special marine warning down here if you were to click on this and then click on here the text pops up of the actual um, warning and you can uh, get the information you need who's in uh, danger and so on and so forth so again this is all in one screen um, then you can exit off this and then you can go over and you can see these outlines here. There's a 5% of tornadoes today. Um, slight risk of severe weather in this area. Um, you got your stations here, your weather stations that are reporting. So it's a lot of good information. Any watches or warnings will pop up on the screen. You can click on them. You can get any information you need. nice thing about this is it's updated every minute. Every minute the watches and warnings and um, storm reports and so on and so forth are uh are um, updated so you can do a lot with this one screen very similar to the radar um, software the GR level X and GR level 2 uh, radar software I've owned this for about 10 years since 2001 and I love it he's been very supportive uh, he's done a lot of updates to it so I would certainly put this in the same ballpark as uh, any of the uh, GR level uh, software radar software suites um, this one I use here, uh, this is good for getting um, model data, um, any of the forecast models that are out there. Um, and what I'll do is I'll show you, um, there's a pretty good snowstorm they're looking for. It's Monday, December 17th right now. And uh, they're looking for a pretty good storm, snowstorm Wednesday, Thursday, Friday time frame. How about that? Uh, end of the world supposed to be on the 21st and we may be uh, digging out of a, a snowstorm. Um, but what you can do is if you, uh, I'll go out of full screen mode here, 
and you can see right now I'm looking at the GFS data I'm looking at the animated version of it we're gonna go out 132 hours I'm gonna go back to full screen mode here and we'll hit play Oops. and we'll kinda of see how this is gonna pan out for us you can see down uh, Illinois um, I'm gonna put my mouse down here because you can see the date also as it's running the 19th you can see we get a the the GFS is really forecasting the major part of the snow right now to be over the central Wisconsin um, area so this is great um, forecast uh, forecasting software again this is going out about hundred and thirty two hours which is five and a half days um, you can go through you can see it's starting at the 18th there on the bottom and we'll run it all the way through now the European model that I ran a little bit took the low over towards Detroit and put the heaviest snow right over Michigan so uh, maybe we'll have to do an update video on this and see how this winter storm actually uh, kind of um, plays out this is great software as far as uh, uh, you know, looking at some of the different models, uh, forecast models, and um, you can kind of flip through a few of them and, and uh, see which one is going to kind of work out the best. Um, so that's kind of an overview of this software. The nice thing about this one, too, if we want to go, let's, let's pause this, we'll go back out of full screen, we'll clear the map over here. And you can also zoom in. Um, let's go down where the uh, the storms are happening in the northern Florida here. And maybe we want to see real quick. Um, we'll go to the the real time, the rapid update model, and we'll go to the zero time frame, which is right now, the latest model. And let's see where the biggest. Uh, these are all the different uh, variables you can look at the different model runs. Let's just see where the mest, um, oh, where's the convective available potential? There is a cape right here. Let's see what the cape is running at down here, and we'll load it up. You can see big storms are happening in the Florida Panhandle, but um, here's the Florida Panhandle. It looks like most of the energy right now is off the coast, so this energy is supposed to be coming up in the area and that's where we've got an area we're looking at for some tornadoes so this is great software for um, looking at uh, future if you will uh, future forecasting <laughs> I guess that's a that's a, a double positive I guess you'd say but uh, what I would do is uh, you know we can also do is we can go out uh, let's clear the map let's um, go out the uh, next 18 hours from now and we'll try to find out where the best uh, cape is or convective available potential energy. We'll let it load here for a couple of seconds. We'll go back into the full screen mode. You can see we are building a little bit more energy up into this area. Nothing major like it was supposed to, so I'm ex probably thinking the severe threat is not going to be real high over Georgia today. We'll have to see how that works out. But anyhow, it's a good piece of fork, uh, you know, software to kind of look and see what the forecast models are predicting in the near future. So, again, a lot of people probably would say overkill to have all these three monitors. But, uh, you know, that's a hobby, too. Do I need all this stuff? I don't need it. But is it helpful? It is helpful when I'm looking at uh, maybe planning my day out. Uh, do I think it's going to be bad? Well, well, I don't know. Look at the forecast models look at what's going on right now currently and if something does happen you know I can pay attention to the